Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, one, two. You know how we do with your boy BQ with the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan with your 2023 Impact Wrestling Rebellion review. So today is Tuesday. I'm sorry I would have liked to do this yesterday. I would have loved to do it after the pay-per-view. When Impact is a Saturday pay-per-view, it's pretty easily easy for me to live stream after, talk about it, review it, whatever. Um, but because it was a Sunday and I got to work it Monday morning, get up at 3.30, it just wouldn't have made sense for me to stay up late and review it. So um, we're knocking it out right now in the place to be on Tuesday, and we're going to talk Rebellion. Overall thoughts on the show. I give it a B, B plus. You know, I think it was exactly what I expected it to be. It didn't exceed my expectations. Um, maybe it ex exceeded them a little bit. But it wasn't something that, you know, I'm, I'm you know, calling my grandma in Puerto Rico and telling her about the next day. Uh, but, it, but it was good. It was solid. Obviously, they're in a situation where they don't have the use of Mickey James. They don't have uh, Josh Alexander. And those are the two that they were putting all of their energy into over the last several months. So over the last several months where creative has been really, really shaky, like those are the two who they've been like locked in on, honed in on, and – you know, putting their best foot forward, creatively, the booking, what have you. So obviously you lose those two. It makes it extremely difficult to put together a show. The overall card, I've already said this a few times, wasn't a huge fan of it. Featured a lot of rematches. I understand that there were some gimmick matches or stipulation matches, whatever you want to call them. I, I've seen all these people fight already. And that's usually a turnoff for me when I'm, you know, watching a pay-per-view. But um, I, I think... For the most part, part it delivered. You know, there's little little hiccups here and there. Um, it is one of their all red everything pay per views. Um, everything's red except the slam anniversary in Baffergoy. But this particular venue, though, you know, usually I'll sit here and be like, "This is red and this is red and this is okay." This place was red, red, but it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. This is the best venue that they run. Uh, it looked incredible. It looked incredible last time they did it, and it looks incredible. It looked incredible this time too. Like that is, I, I wish that they could do more, more stuff there. Mike was saying on his podcast on a, on Brace for Impact or the Mike and JD show, whatever he's calling it these days, is that, you know, that should be the new Impact Zone. Logistically, we don't know if, you know, uh, doing Canada every single month is feasible for them. I mean, they're doing Canada the next several months, so. Clearly, it's it's a option, it's a possibility, but it would make a great hub because it looks so professional, it looks so good on TV, and Impact would get a lot of brownie points with wrestling viewers because right now most episodes look like crap, and this even had the dreaded ramp, uh, can't hard camp angle that nine out of nine Impact wrestling fans hate, but here because. Uh, it's it just such a beautiful venue. Like it didn't, it didn't really matter, you know, because it's live lighting's great. It's crystal clear. There's no stupid filters on it. There's no color correction where they're the blacks are really, really rich and shiny and all this shit. There was none of that. It just looked, it just looked uh, the way that we want it to look when we're watching the show, it, you know, the way we want it to look uh, week to week, not just for live streams, but, all the time and it just also makes me think why do they mess with it so much when it when you, you have a live stream and you, and you can't mess with it and it looks phenomenal like why uh why do you go in post-production with an episode and make it look like shit like i just you know who knows but again venue absolutely beautiful let's run down these results real quick um you know give you my thoughts on everything obviously how weird i had the, the results up here waiting for me and then i clicked on them and they're they're all gone there we go got them back up uh we're going to talk real quick the, the countdown of rebellion i was a little critical of this because i don't think these are two matches where someone's going to um tune in and be like okay i'm going to order this pay-per-view they've been doing a pretty good job over the last several years with making uh these countdowns these pre-shows whatever they want to call them um you know somewhat interesting like, this is one that I, I saw a lot of people say, I'm not even going to watch it. 
like they, they didn't care. So that's not a good thing. The the real positive I want to say with it though is that they actually had uh, in the lower third, you know, they did like a lower third graphic of uh, Impact Plus. Now, granted, the show's not streaming live on Impact Plus, but we I've been talking about this for as long as I can remember. They don't promote the damn app. They don't say how much it is. Nothing. I still want them to get into the value on screen, like take a couple times instead of running down New Japan's card to We Own the Night. Like take that time and be like, hey, this is Impact Plus. This is the Ultimate Insider. This is uh, what you pay. This is what you get. You know, uh, deliver. And let them know what the value is. But at least here, they say, hey, you know, they, they had a graphic saying Impact Plus is this for the year. Is this a month? month had a qr code so they're they're taking steps forward thank god but countdown of rebellion um first match was uh shira and champagne Singh versus heath and rhino um the fans did not really care nor did i even though the champagne Singh gimmick is interesting to me and he has one of the better theme songs in the company i believe um no one no one really cared about this rhino is just well first of all shira and Singh win i was actually glad to see that i thought it was you know i thought that uh you know getting the, the cheap crowd pop to have heath and rhino win is what the, where they were going to go but shira and Singh win even though i find it the gimmick interesting at the same time it's a little phony i mean Come on, he struck it big in, in Vegas, and now he's rich. Like, I this is not a a knock on him. I'm just being realistic, because I actually kind of like him. I didn't used to, but but I, I've, I've come around on him since uh, he kind of branched off on his own. He's probably one of the lower paid people in the company. You know, on a per appearance basis, doesn't wrestle a whole lot. So you know, the money he was. Uh, Flashing Heath was probably uh, what he makes for a set of tapings in real life, you know. So that's why it just it's just a little bit like phony. Uh, AEW has a very similar character with uh, Davari, Arya Davari. He's supposed to be the richest person in the company, but he's like a jobber. Um, you know, I don't think it connects with the people. But I, you know, I'm always down to see something different, and I'm glad that they came out to his music, like I said. Uh, but they did go for the cheap pop. So Shira and Sing win. I'm talking about this way too much, but they win. And I'm thinking, okay, cool. Like, here's a little, it's a good win for these guys. Give them a little momentum. Why not? And then it's the same song and dance with Rhino. Um, you got to see the gore. It does not matter if Rhino wins a match. If he loses a match, uh, they're going to, they're going to do the gore. And it's, it's a spear. Uh, Moose does it. Uh, but Rosemary does it. Uh, Boopy does it. I, I'm I'm sure someone else in one way, shape, or form does it. But it's this is not a a finisher that other people aren't using in the company. I think I think the Gore's time is 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 past. And uh, when you do that after the match, then you just cut down Shira and Sing, and the momentum's all gone. They even start off the show saying this is a rematch from BTI. Like there should be no rematches from BTI on an on a pay per view card in any way, shape, or form. Then we get the uh, Impact Knockouts World Championship, World Tag Team Championship. I'm sorry, the Coven versus Death Dolls. So Kylan King, Taylor Wild versus Jessica and Rosemary. I I'm going to give a little bit of props to this match. This was better than I expected it to be. It wasn't all all phony and cheesy like the stuff they've been doing on the Impact Television show is. They they stepped it up. They at least came off serious. They were still true to the gimmick. You know, they come down holding the tarot cards, which is very silly. But other than that, they kept um, they kept it serious. And I think that's when a gimmick works. Like, you can you can do something off the wall and unbelievable. But when you get in the ring, it has to be, okay, now we're here to compete. And that's how this match came across. So I'm going to give some props. This was better than I expected it to be. Uh, I'm especially going to give well uh, – Props to Taylor Wilde because she's the one I've been extremely critical since they they changed her gimmick over. I've been saying week in and week out how bad it is, and you know it seems like they're going in a good direction. It's, you know, it seems like they're tweaking things along the way. 
So I thought this was uh this was good. Uh, Rosemary hit like two spears in this match. So it's like at this point we've seen um, the spear three times and the pay-per-view hasn't even started yet. Um, and then later in the match, we get multiple spears because multiple spears, multiple wrestlers who use a spear as a finisher in the fucking match. But uh, the Coven ultimately wins. I don't know what's next for them. There's no tag teams in the company. Um, these two teams cannot continue to fight. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, we'll see what they do. Main card kicks off Impact Tag Team Championship Ultimate X. I saw on social media people really, really liked this. I'm not going to say I didn't like it, so just just bear with me here. It was good, but I don't think it reached a desired effect. What do I mean by that? When the Knockouts had their Ultimate X, that was one of these matches the next day you're like, yo, you're still talking about Ultimate X, right? And you're telling people who didn't watch the show, like, you got to watch the Knockouts Ultimate X. This was not that. This was, like, forgettable. We forgot about it by the end of the show. And everyone forgot about it the next day. So I don't think it – I mean, they haven't done done this before, at least to my knowledge, uh, to where it was like a two-on-two. -two. It's always been, you know, a multi-person match. Everyone's against each other. Now it's two-on-two -two where you got a, a partner. And um, I just don't think it worked as far as an Ultimate X match. Even though I'm tired of seeing these teams wrestle, I would have preferred a, a normal match, to be honest, to this um, I think a two out of three falls match would have been really, really good for these teams. That way they can get their spots in and they maybe do a little bit of storytelling too, because with the ultimate X structure, there's no storytelling. It's just, um, it, it just choreographed spots, you know, but uh, that's not to say it wasn't enjoyable and it wasn't good. I just don't think you're talking about it at the water cooler the next day. Do people still talk at water coolers? I don't know, but you get where I'm going with it. I, I, I thought it was ultimately, uh, no pun intended. I thought it was ultimately uh, forgettable. But the Bullet Club wins. The tag team division is it, they're in as bad a place as a knockouts tag team division. Like who who can they wrestle? There's two teams. It's a two team division. Um, they can't continue to fight each other. They've been feuding for a while, so it'll be interesting to see with this next set of tapings where both sets of tag team champions like where are they. Um, where they go with it. I thought the finish of this at first, it was really cool when uh, they were, first of all, the ABC name is very, very dumb. Um, but hey, that's not my decision. But when they did whatever the one, two, three, two sweet, whatever the hell it's called, but they just would uh, Ace Austin just kind of like through, you know, by one foot, just through Chris, Chris Bay up to the structure. I thought that was, really really cool but it was there where chris saban climbed up and he's it was painful watching him because chris bay couldn't get the belts down and that's the problem with this ultimate x you got in a, this particular one you have two belts up there one belt is already a bitch to get off especially when you're hanging upside down because everything's off when you're hanging upside down your left is your right and your right is your left and your um the blood's rushing to your head and you're, you're trying to uh, move as fast as possible to get it off. <laughs> Giggity. Um, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. That's how it should be. But um, instead they're climbing up there and they're trying to get it off as fast as possible. It's taken them forever to get one, let alone two off. Chris, Chris Saban is just hanging there. And then Alex Shelley, who had plenty of time to climb up there, was acting too tired to jump up. I mean, I thought the finish was was sloppy. Not sloppy. That's not a good. It was just sluggish. It was just, you know, um, but it was a good match. It was a good opener. It was fun for the people. I just don't think uh, we see it ever again. And then Steve Macken cut a promo about the world title match. They show Josh Alexander on his card as much as as much as possible. And then, uh, you know, they did. Uh, the same with Mickey James, you know, they had a video package of her talking about the last rodeo. And she said, Oh, I'm, I wanted to wrestle all these knockouts and it's showing Alicia Edwards and Rosemary and havoc. I'm like, she didn't wrestle any of these girls. She wrestled like three or four people got a title shot. And there we go. You know, she did not run through the division anyway. Uh, when I was previewing the show on the Patreon and again, the Patreon uh, for the next two months, maybe even, 
yeah, for the next two months, um, if you just do the $1 tier, which is a support tier, you actually have access to all the content I'm doing on there. Uh, everything I do here is on there ad free. Um, I just uploaded on the Patreon yesterday. Um, we bust these graphics out. Uh, my thoughts on Nick Aldis joining the company and my thoughts on uh, Jordan Grace's potential departure and who I think could replace her in the knockouts division. Uh, so there's that plug. Um, what I was saying was there were several matches on here that I thought could drag down the pay-per-view if they weren't good. And for the most part, they were all in a row, you know, the pre-show and then you broke it up with the ultimate X and then you got into the Dango and, and Santino and PCO and Eddie. I mean, all these things were like in a row. Uh, well, there was, and then the exhibition champ championship match happened. Thank God before hardcore war. So they actually they actually spaced it out pretty decently. But this was one of the matches I felt had the potential to drag down the card. It was Joe Hendry, Dirty Dango, Santino versus The Design. Um, and this was probably the worst match of the night. I don't think it was that bad. Uh, it was just the worst match of the night. It did not drag it down like I thought it would. But it was close. I'm not going to get into this one too much. Uh, Santino hit the Cobra at the end. I was saying that they should have teased the Cobra on the episode of Impact and then actually did the, put the Cobra on the pay-per-view, but they wanted YouTube clips, uh, you, excuse me, YouTube clicks uh, to try to promote the pay-per-view. So, you know, that's what it was. So um, Sammy Callahan turned on the design. As much as I don't want to see this any longer, I hope this was not the blow off. I, I really freaking hope not. Stevie Wonder could see this coming through a brick wall. You know, Sammy turning on him. The story here, which was kind of, I was always annoyed when Sammy went for the thumbs up, thumbs down, and then Dina would grab the thumb, not let him do the thumbs down. That was a story. That was part of the story where he finally got to do it when he took out Dina. I think it went over people's heads for the most part. I don't think it was that, you know. Because nobody really cared. This is this is um, one of the storylines that the majority of the people just want to be over. They don't want to see any more. They want to see uh, Sammy Callahan maybe get to that world title picture or just the main event scene in general. You know what I mean? But um, people are out out are out on the design. You know, Sammy. Sammy turned on him. I don't think people really really cared because because the storyline isn't over. I'll give some um, – I actually thought Dango was going to get taken out before this because I was saying there's no way Dirty Dango was on the Impact pay per you know, but he was. And uh, I'll give some props to Santino. He was not really a comedy wrestler in this, you know. He just kind of wrestled. So I thought that was good. And uh, Joe Hendry showed, up, showed off some serious power in this match. But, um, you know, Santino and company win. I guess they're going to say that Sammy uh, worked with Santino and pretended he was taken out. And I'm sure they're going to explain it. I just don't know if anyone cares. Then we get the last rights match, PCO versus Eddie Edwards. This was one of the ones that I was like, man, this, this may not be good. This was good. This this is the one that really over-delivered for me. I, I think I was just wasn't looking forward to it because it's another storyline that I'm just done with. It's been going on. Uh, since I was a, a small child. And I, I think this is the blow off. It has to be, you know. I don't know where they go with Eddie and Alicia next. I, once it, once Alicia turned heel, I thought Eddie was going to win. Because I'm thinking, okay, you're going to write Eddie off TV for a while, right? You know. I don't know. But but uh, overall, I actually thought this one delivered. This was, um, it was a match of the night, but it, it was up there. It, it was really up there. PCO wins. I'm curious to see what they do with PCO at this point because he's only ever fucked around with Eddie Edwards. That's it. Even as a part of Honor No More, that's it. So, you know, I, I know he had a thing going with Jonah. Jonah, who who is who's he gonna wrestle next? You know, maybe it's something with Macklin. I don't I don't know. Um, 
we'll see. But but this one, I, I want to say delivered. Alicia came out at the end. Um, she got super kicked, which which the crowd liked. I thought that was a a pretty good little spot. <clears throat> she took that kick like a G. Exhibition Championship Elimination Match: Trey Miguel uh, versus Jonathan Gresham and Trey Miguel. Trey, uh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the uh, results here, and they wrote Trey Miguel twice. Speedball Mike Bailey. So Trey Miguel wins this thing. Um, I thought that I would. I this this went how I knew it was going to go. I think it was entertaining enough. I'm glad it was an elimination match. It was it was uh, choreographed uh, from the beginning, but there were some good spots here. I I I thought that Trey would win. He did. I was hoping though that he was going to win clean. Because you notice when Mike Bailey wins, it's always him with that shocked, that stupid shocked look that he made that he does because he's a horrible actor. Every match ends like that. They do not beat Mike Bailey like decisively clean in the middle of the ring because they think he's a main eventer. I disagree. He's an X Division talent, and I, I stand by that. I would have liked to see Trey Miguel win cleanly and move on to something else. I, I would have liked to see Jonathan Gresham win, to be honest. I would have liked to see Trey Miguel win cleanly, move on to something else. But instead, it's going to be Trey and Mike Bailey continuing on until Mike Bailey wins the title. It's just clear what they're doing. You know, Trey is a great exhibition champion. They don't need to take the belt from him anytime soon unless you're going to put him in the main event scene, which you're not because you got a heel champion. So uh, it was a great exhibition match. Jonathan Gresham deserves better than what he's getting right now because he won the first of three against Mike Bailey. It's at this point been forgotten and now we just see him as like you know a loser in a sense not a loser but you understand like we've seen him uh not come out victorious the last three times he's wrestled so how do you heat this guy back up i don't know we'll see um you know him and swan wouldn't be a bad tag. i would pair the two of them together as a tag team at this point those are two guys you're like what the hell are we gonna do with them that's what i would do Hardcore war happened. Hardcore one, excuse me, hardcore war was a little better than I expected it to be as well. Um, someone, you know, I said that on Twitter, then someone said, uh, see, just let things plan out. I'm like, I didn't like it that much. I mean, he said, excuse me, I misspoke. He said, see, let things play out. And I just responded, I didn't like it that much. Um, I'm going to give it some props for being better than I expected. I would have rather have not watched it. To be to be honest, and it was Team Dreamer, um, Tommy Dreamer, Kazarian, Jabba Mora, Killer Ke Killer Kelly, and Boopy, and they beat Team Bully, which is Bully Ray, Kenny King, Moose, Brian Myers, and Masha Slamovich. And Bully Ray consisted of a team of guys I don't think need to be losing right now, against some guys who all they do is lose. So um, it ended the way we thought it was going to be. Um, I got to tell you, with Killer Kelly and Masha. I'm going to go on my red rant. They both have red hair. Kylan King has red hair. Jody Threat has red hair. Like, when when does this stop? Anyway, these two girls, if, if I didn't know what Killer Kelly was wearing, that she had, like, the Bully Ray clothes on, uh, pants on, if I didn't know that's what she was wearing, I wouldn't have been able to tell these two women apart when they were wrestling. Like, if their clothes even semi-resembled each other, I would not have been able to tell them apart. And I think that's an issue, you know, um, God, who used to say it? Um, uh, what the hell's his name? They used to run WCW, the bro, bro, why am I forgetting his freaking name? You know who I'm talking about. He used to always say, when you watch, on T watch TNA, every guy has long hair. It was Storm and it was Bram and it was all these dudes and the, everyone has long hair. Bobby Roode is in that category at one point. And now everyone has red hair and they look the fucking same. Uh, you know, but for the more, most part, I thought this was okay. Um, the finish. Tommy Dreamer jumps off the 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 ladder and Vince, Vince Russo, that's what I was trying to say. Good Lord, I'm, I'm getting old, folks. Tommy Dreamer jumps off the ladder, 
I thought this, the, the, the little thing with the referees was very silly uh, when they all counted at the same time. Why is there four referees when the action, the pin, there's no rules. You just need one referee to count the one, two, three in the middle of the ring. The Royal Rumble doesn't have four referees. Maybe it's got four. I think they got two. Like, why is there fucking four referees? There's like four or five refs for this match. Um, there's no rules, right? So, but I, but I thought all them, you know, I, th- I thought it was very, very hokey. But the finish where he jumped off the top, it got a loud pop. He he pins Bully and gets a one, two, three. That's what I was saying at Hard to Kill when Josh and Bully had their match. Josh jumped off the top of the ladder, got a huge pop. And then he went for the ankle lock, which to me is a very overrated finisher. I think it sucks the life out of the arena. <clears throat> I don't think it looks like it hurts. I'm sure it does. It just doesn't look like it. Uh, there's not a good way to tap out of it. You know, you're flail- flailing your arms. and it, it looks very silly. I'm using the word silly a lot today. Um, so this ended the way that Hard to Kill should have ended. End with the end with the big pop, and then we get Nick Aldis on commentary. People really like this. Uh, people are excited that he's part of the company. They're going to hot shot him uh, into the main event, into the world title scene immediately. Clearly, that's just what Impact does. Steve Macklin then takes on Kushida. Um, I've got to wrap this up within the next couple minutes, so I'm going to be very quick about this. Steve Macklin wins. Steve Macklin wins. Steve Macklin wins. He is the world champion. Uh, I don't care about anything else to happen on the show at this point, whether it was good, bad, whatever. Steve Macklin's a champ. Steve Macklin's a champ. And this match was uh, was pretty good. What I hope to see is that they they now that he's a champion, he gets the ball and gets to run with it. I, I have concerns that's not going to happen. Scott Yamore comes out after the match. Well, Steve Macklin calls him out, says, I don't want the belt from you. From the ref, you know, I want it from you. Wants him to put it on. He takes out Demore with the belt. He takes that stooge out with the belt. I loved it. I love that. You know, at this point, Scott shouldn't come to the ring because the last couple of times he has, he's been left, you know, knocked flat on his ass. But this was done for Nick Aldis to get involved and confront him, and they're probably going to fight on the Impact Plus show, even though they should drag it out. And then the Impact World's Knockout, excuse me, Impact Knockouts World Championship. This was the best match on the card. We knew that it was going to be. Everyone knew from day one that um, even when Mickey James was involved, but once they took her out, everyone's like, hey, this is going to be the match. It should main event the show. The finish surprised me a little bit. I thought Jordan Grace would have won this, but now that we know she's likely out of the company, uh, more on that on the Patreon as far as my opinions of that. I think that she's going to do this set of tapings. I don't expect to see her after this. So Deanna's, you know, Deanna's a great champion. Now we're going to see her as a babyface champion. How is that going to go? You know, she was a great heel champion, so this is going to be a different um, dynamic for her. And it's just going to be different television. So they have the opportunity right now with Josh gone to really do something different, to give Macklin the ball and run with it, to give Deanna Peraz with the ball as a babyface and run with it. They have the opportunity to do this. Um, is it good? Is that going to happen? I see the show just being built around Nick Aldis personally. That's not what I want. I want the champions to be champions. I'm, I'm very worried that this Macklin title run is going to be very similar to the Eli Drake title run. I will get more into that on the Patreon later this week with my opinions, but overall I thought this show was okay. I give it a, a, a very solid, uh, B you know, maybe a B plus, but um, I'm excited to see television because now it's a bit of a reset. What are they going to do? Are things going to be different? We'll see. Hopefully it's not the same people fighting. I'm your boy BQ. Thanks for checking me out. I got to bounce. Peace.